can talk for hours and we should talk for hours on end. Hi guys, it's Dustin. Lately, I have been very nostalgic over old YouTube. One type of video I used to love watching all the time were people's monthly favorites videos. And people would just share things they've been liking and not in an annoying influencer TikTok shop kind of way, but in a genuine way where people just share random things they've been liking. So I thought today I would share with you guys some of my winter favorites slash essentials and recent pickups. I guess we'll start with this, what's in my hand right now, this mug. I was drinking out of this mug a few videos back where I was sharing my favorite movies and so many of you guys wanted to know where it's from. My friend Annabelle opened up an art shop in New York called Piper Blue Collective and I visited a few weeks ago to support and I got this mug. So that's where it's from. It's such a cute mug. It has a yellow handle with these like circular textures, these colors colorful dots all around it, and these two stars. That spin. Honestly, that's what sold me. It's probably the cutest mug I own right now. And even better, it's made by a small artist, Yuhua. And while we're at it, my next favorite, which honestly has just been a yearly obsession, Earl Grey tea. And I put in a splash of like creamer. Lately, I've been using this like Trader Joe's brown sugar creamer. But even at cafes, my go-to order lately has been London Fog. And sometimes I feel like I get really tired of coffee and matcha, so Earl Grey tea is just a nice refresher. It's so good. I love it. It kind of tastes like Fruit Loops to me. This tea has just been a real comfort for me this winter. I feel like very British. Yeah, I love cream in my, in my tea. Yeah, solid accent. So solid. I'm so good in that accent. It's crazy. Moving on to my actual organized categories. Starting out with fashion. First thing is this hoodie from Cole Buxton. This is their heavyweight cropped hoodie. Lately, I've been on the journey of collecting good quality basics to build my wardrobe, and this is the newest addition. I've been holding out on buying a black hoodie until I can find the perfect one, and I think I found it. Again, I'm in a stage of my life where I'm just willing to invest in good quality basics that are gonna last me my entire lifetime instead of buying a bunch of like $50 hoodies over a span of a few years. This is just an amazing hoodie. It's comfortable, it's good quality, and it fits me well to my proportions, which is really rare for me when it comes to hoodies and just clothes in general. I feel like every time I find a hoodie that fits me, it cuts at my waist and it's just flattering. The hood is always too small, but with this, it is not a problem. The hood is huge. It's actually big enough so I can like almost cover my eyes. So when I'm at the airport trying to like take a nap or something, I'll just like, put it over my eyes. Moving on, my next fashion favorite is this cable knit sweater from Blarney. This is a classic Aran wool hand knit sweater from Ireland. I ended up finding this in a vintage store while I was in Austin, Texas for around 50 bucks, which if you know anything about these sweaters, they tend to be really expensive around 150 to $200. So that was a pretty good price for me. Yeah, this would have been $189 US. And I've been on the hunt for a white cable knit sweater for the longest time. So when I finally found one that was like actually good quality and fits me pretty pretty well. I was like, I'm fucking getting this. I think this is just a really timeless classic staple for your closet. And now I can live out my Rory Gilmore dreams. I can be Chris Evans in Knives Out. I can be Harry from When Harry Met Sally. Next is this leather jacket. It's from Gap, but I did thrift this. It's funny because I actually got rid of this and gave it to my dad during a closet clean out. But then while visiting home, I saw it in his closet and I was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I actually want that. I actually want that back. So I took it. It's just a really classic looking leather jacket, which I love. And out of all the leather jackets I've found so far, this is probably the best fitting one for me. It's super easy to style with. and I've been getting a lot of wear out of it. When I was in New York a few weeks ago, I practically wore this every day. And being California, since it's not super cold, I found this is a great jacket to wear because it doesn't get super hot. I've been scarf obsessed and essential, if you may. They're just a great way to spice up any outfit, keeps you extra warm, and there's so many ways you can style a scarf. You can just like style it normally, you can twist it around your neck, you can make it a bob bala bala balaclava. Bob. In my head, I want to say babushka, but I know that's like grandma or something. But like a little head scarf. This has been my go-to way of wearing a scarf. I just think it's really cute and keeps your head warm. These three have been my current scarf rotation. This is my most recent pickup, plain red cashmere wool mixed scarf from Burberry. I got this off Girl for like $25, which is crazy. I felt the need to add a plain red scarf to my wardrobe. It's just gonna be a really good staple in my closet, especially during winter time and the holiday season. I kind of feel like Piglet or like a Winnie the Pooh character. If you follow me on TikTok or Instagram, you've seen me wearing this a ton. My Domo hat. Yeah, I was Roar XD as a kid. Yes, I was obsessed with Domo. I had Domo everything. I had Domo little figurines. I had a Domo backpack, Domo hat, Domo wallet. Anything Domo I had, I was up in here stacked up. Anyway, I've been loving wearing this thing. I throw it on just whenever I go out with my friends at night or something. I think genuinely it's just really cute and 
fashionably, I actually really like it. It just adds a little personality. I've actually been asked so many times where I found this hat, but I don't know what to tell you guys. This is from my childhood. This is well over a decade old. My brother got this for me when I was a kid. I think from like Spencer's or something, and I've just had it since. So I don't really know where you could get it. I know people are reselling this shit for like hundreds of dollars on Depop, which is crazy. I'm surprised it's honestly lasted this long. Come on, quality. Come on, vintage. So I've done a lot of traveling this past year and I have a lot more travel plans coming up. And I needed a camera bag so I could bring all my equipment with me to make videos while I travel. But there's this thing about camera bags where like, they're so ugly. I didn't want a bag where you see it and you're like, that's a camera bag. But, but. <laughs> I watched a ton of camera bag reviews. Like if you look at my YouTube history, there's just like 20 top 10 camera bags of 2023. And I found this. It's the Bravite camera bag. I got it in the charcoal gray color. I've been obsessed with gray for some reason. What I love about this bag is not only the look, like it just looks like a normal backpack, but also the multi-functionality of this backpack. Like, I don't only use this for my travels, but whenever I go to cafes to work and stuff, like I'm, this has been my go-to bag. So this section here is the actual camera bag portion and they give you these little tabs have velcro so you can like take them out organize the little compartments however you want but there's also a ton more storage of a front pocket section a laptop compartment which i've never had a backpack with a laptop compartment before and honestly this is all i need when it comes to a backpack because pretty much i only carry my laptop anyway but they also have the side pocket and this is where you would put your camera so it's like easily accessible. A water bottle pocket, strap to put on your luggage when you travel. And they have this little discreet pocket here where you can put your passport. And the best part about it is the price isn't too expensive. For what you get and the price you pay, I think it's completely worth it. And I'm pretty sure they have a lifetime warranty. Last of my fashion favorites is some jewelry from 33 millimeter. This ring, it's like a square shaped ring. This has been my go-to daily ring. I'm in a phase right now where I don't really like jewelry. I don't wear it too often. I think it's because back in 2020, it was kind of the trend to wear layers and layers of necklaces and stack your rings and have a ring on every finger. And that was something I did all the time where I kind of got tired of it. And now I don't really like to wear too much jewelry. But whenever I do, I love minimal, timeless, simple types of jewelry like this chain. It's just a simple silver chain. But if you look closely, there's some green jewel details, which I really like from afar. It looks very like timeless and simple. But if you look up close, it is a little bit unique. Now moving on to my miscellaneous favorites. These are just my random favorites that I did not know how to categorize. Most of them aren't even items. They're just like things I've been loving lately that have especially been helping me get through this winter season because obviously with winter comes the winter blues or seasonal depression which I have dealt with for so many years. It's colder out, there's less sun, and you end up just cooped up at home not seeing your friends as often. Add to that the overbearing feeling of loneliness that I have dealt with my entire life, my mental health goes in the gutter sometimes. There have been some ways I've been trying to combat this like dedicating chill nights with friends, romanticizing winter, and other favorites I'll be talking about later in this video, but also therapy. Which brings us to our sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp makes starting therapy easier and much less intimidating for a lot of people. They let you have therapy sessions through phone call, video chat, message, whatever is the most comfortable version of therapy for you. BetterHelp can match you to one of over 30,000 therapists in their network based on your needs, preferences, and location, which gives you access to a wider range of expertise that may not be available in your city. To get started, you fill out a questionnaire that will ask you questions about what challenges you're going through and what kind of therapist you'd like, and then BetterHelp can match you with a the therapist to help you. You'll be matched with a therapist in most cases within 48 hours, and you can schedule therapy sessions at a time that is convenient for you. If you ever feel like your therapist isn't a great fit, you can switch therapists with a click of a button in your settings at no additional cost. Join over 4 million people who have used BetterHelp to start living a happier, healthier life. Click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com Dustin. Clicking the link helps support this channel, but also gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp so you can connect with therapists and see if it helps you. Moving on, my first miscellaneous favorite. Ignore my pajamas. Candles. This winter, I feel like I've really been immersing myself in the winter season and really trying to romanticize it. I feel like it's just helped me mentally survive the winter. Like I saw snow. No, I made myself warm drinks. I wear cute little outfits with my puffer and scarves and gloves. And in addition to that, I light a ton of candles, like all the time. It's just brought me a lot of comfort, just the warmth of the light. And it really helps the ambiance. It makes your home feel so beautiful and cozy. And I think simple things just like lighting candles. I lately have been lighting a lot of candlesticks. Next blush the milk makeup cream blush in quirk this is honestly a yearly favorite probably in the summertime i put it on the top of my nose and cheeks to look sunburnt but in the winter time i've been putting it on the tip of my nose and cheeks to make myself look cold you know when you get cold and sniffly and your face just gets all red i've been doing that intentionally because if i'm already gonna get a little red might as well emphasize it a little bit and you know do that whole like oh like i'm cold but i'm cute like brr i'm cold but i'm cute you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I love the, ooh, I'm cold look, I guess. Okay, this is truly a miscellaneous favorite. It's so random, 
Pop Mart toys. If you don't know Pop Mart, it's basically this like Japanese toy company. They have a bunch of toy collections. They're all blind bag toys, so you never know what you're gonna get. And it's really fun just to like unbox them with your friends and stuff. These are the ones I got. Aren't they adorable? I will say, although these are a favorite of mine, I'm not gonna buy anymore. Cause I feel like things like this can get crazy real quick. What is it, Sunny Angels? Bitches be crazy with those. They have like hundreds of those in their home. And personally, I just can't do that. I just feel like that's just a lot of clutter and a lot of money. So I'm trying to practice self-control and I'm only getting these. Trust me on this, when it comes to these toys and things, you do not want to go crazy with them. Coming from a Pop Funko kid, okay? I briefly mentioned this earlier, but going to the movie theaters specifically alone. I used to do this all the time, especially when I first moved to LA and had no friends. But recently I signed up for the AMC membership and I get three free movies a week. And the movies that have been coming out lately have been killer. So I've been going to the movie theaters a lot and I forgot how nice it is to go to the movie theaters alone. I will say going to the movie theaters alone has really helped my self-love journey and being independent and learning how to do things alone. That is a very small step, especially if you're trying to work on that. I highly recommend going to the theaters alone. It's like so easy to like, like no one cares if you're there alone. No one notices because they're all just there to watch the movie. Ideally, I would love my friends to come with me, but sometimes coordinating that as an adult is not easy and doable. And it's honestly exhausting sometimes. So sometimes if I have like a free evening randomly, I'm just like, Let's hit the theaters. Next up is probably really stupid and nerdy, but listening to jazz instrumental music while using the Pomodoro timer method. For my productivity. If you don't know what the Pomodoro method is, it's basically a timer method to help you stay productive. So you'll set this timer for like 25 minutes, you'll work for the 25 minutes straight, and then you'll have a five minute break, and then you'll start the 25 minute thing again. Anyway, I used to use this method a lot back in high school when I was a academic god. And I kind of miss my old work ethic because I used to be so good. And now since I'm self-employed, I work from home, everything's kind of up to my own schedule. I'm just not as disciplined as I used to be. So I've been trying to practice using the Pomodoro method again while I'm editing. And while I'm doing that, I used to listen to a lot of lo-fi back in high school, but now I listen to a lot of jazz music instrumentals and it's really helped my productivity. My next miscellaneous favorites, photo booths. At some point in my life, I told myself, if you see a photo booth, you're going in it no matter what. And I've been doing that. Especially in LA, there's so many cute photo booths that have film strips. Photo booths are just such a fun but intentional way to get photos, especially in our generation. I feel like it's so easy now to take a photo. You just have your phone and you can spam it but with a photo booth and film in general you have to be intentional behind it there's like a creativity to it where you have to plan out the poses and you only have like one shot at it or you'll have to pay another five dollars if you want to redo it and it's a fun activity you can do with your friends and you get tangible photos which i think is so unheard of now like no one prints their photos anymore because we all have them up in our iCloud storage. My fridge is just like full of photo booth pictures. I love it. Pool is my next favorite. A few months back, I played pool for the first time. I sucked at it, I was so bad. Then a month later, I played pool with some of my friends and like randomly, I was just like really good. Okay, really good is like exaggerated. I was pretty good, especially for my second time only playing pool, I was like, I was like winning. And me being me, when I find something I'm automatically good at, of course I'm gonna get obsessed with it. Suddenly it's my personality, yeah. I'm always pulled in, okay? I'm never pulled out, I'm always pulled in. I'm always down for some pool. Saying all this sounds like I'm like a pro at pool. I'm not, I'm definitely not. My goal is to get so good where I can just like do the crazy trick shots. This is so stupid, why? <laughs> I'm doing a whole section of this video where I'm talking about pool, this is so dumb. But it's my favorite, it's one of my favorites. I also think pool in general is just such a attractive skill to have. Like if you are good at pool, you're hot. That's the rules. Like if you can demolish in some pool, you're fine. I said it, you said it, everyone says it. And if you wanna get a little serious about it, pool has helped me a lot. My relationship with masculinity, strangely, I just feel like pool is just such like a quote unquote masculine thing. And I don't really ever feel too masculine, but when I play pool, I feel like a dude. I'm like, hey, yeah, yeah. I've been dapping up my friends. As a joke, I don't dap people up. The amount of times I've had to deal with that experience where you say hello to a dude and they're like, hey, and I'm like, hey, and then they're like, oh, hey. Cause I'm a hugger. Do I look like a person that dabs people up? Seriously, would you look at me and be like, no. So whenever someone does that to me, I'm like, you knew I wasn't gonna do that. Now why you gotta make it awkward? Just open your arms and hug me, brother. Hug me, brother! <laughs> Moving on to music.
artists I've been listening to recently, Victoria Monet. Victoria Monet is criminally underrated, and I think she's finally getting her roses. I love listening to her in the gym, and she's so talented. She's written a ton of Ariana songs. She has everything. She can dance, she can sing, she has the outfits, like her stage presence is amazing. And I actually recently found out that she's from Sacramento, which makes me love her even more, because if you did not know, I'm from Sacramento, which I fucking say in every video, and it's so annoying. But whenever I find a creative that's also from Sacramento, I just get so excited. Because it's not the place that births out creatives. It's not very common. Whenever I find a fellow 916, I'm like, I love ya. Ciro is also a favorite of mine last winter, and I just think his music is so beautiful, melancholy, and I can never get tired of listening to Ciro. I would say his music is similar to Cigarettes After Sex, where yeah, all the songs kind of sound the same. They're kind of all the same song in a different font. Yeah, whatever. But I will eat up every song, and that's what makes me like it. I like the predictability of the music. I also just love how his vocals sound. The way he like layers his vocals and harmonizes, and it's something that I would love to take inspiration for my own music. His vocals are just so seamless. The reverb, it's just perfect. And anyway, moving on. Sarah Kinsley is so underrated. If you like Lord, Florence and the Machines, I feel like you'll like Sarah Kinsley. She is just so incredibly talented. The fact that she produces her own music, her voice is so unique, like her tone. It's so impressive what she's able to create. Her lyrics are so hard-hitting and relatable, and she writes a lot about romance and lack of and stuff like that. And recently, actually, she followed me back on Instagram. I did fangirl a little bit, just a little bit. And Renee Rapp, which I feel like everyone's obsessed with her. She's the white girl of the month. I will say, I hope she gets into her R&B bag. Personally, I love all her music. I love her pop stuff. But when I listened to her album, my favorite was Tummy Hurt which is definitely the most R&B-ish sound on her album. Some songs I've been loving is How You Love Me by Melody Gardot. One of my favorite songs is Say Magnifica by Melody Gardot. And for some reason, I just never decided to explore the rest of her discography. So this past month, I decided to. Anyone But You by Stil Woozy. Along with Victoria Monet in the gym, I've been listening to a lot of Stil Woozy. And he made a song for the Anyone But You movie, which I didn't watch. But I do be listening to the song on repeat. Anyone but you could get it. And lastly for music, Love You So by Leonie Bynes. Featuring Rin. I actually featured the song in my latest vlog because Leonie was kind enough to give me permission to use it. But the song is just so cute. If you like Steven Universe, you will love this song. The only thing about the song though is it is only on SoundCloud, sadly. Uh -huh. Claim to be good with cold weather. Ending off the favorites with media. The movie The Holdovers. This is probably one of my favorite movies that has come out of 2023. It is technically a holiday Christmas movie, but I don't think it's like overbearingly Christmassy where you can't watch it year round. It's basically a movie about this teacher, a student, and a lunch lady that stay on campus of their private school over break because they have nowhere else to go. And it's just a heartwarming, wholesome movie. If you like Dead Poet Society, it's kind of reminiscent of that in a way where it's kind of like an academia type. Very classic, very timeless with all the shots and the soundtrack is amazing. I listen to it on a daily basis to feel like I am in the movie. Next for media is the TV show Will and & Grace. And it's just been my go-to TV show I've been binge watching and putting on in the background whenever I'm just like working or something like that. This girl and guy, they're best friends and he's gay. And they have the little sidekicks, Karen and Jack. And the writing is just hilarious. I feel like it's very rare for me to actually laugh while watching a show. I'll be, I'll be LOLing. I'll be lamoing. I'll be raffling when it comes to Will and Grace, okay? My last two media are podcasts, the Just Trish podcast. Trisha Paytas has always been my guilty pleasure and her podcast is my favorite. It's like the highlights of my week. I just love any podcast that kind of just feels like a sleepover with your friends and you're just gabbing. And they just talk about pop culture, which I am pop culture obsessed. My new goal is to get on the Just Trish podcast. Like I need to get big enough to get on that show. Thinking of pop culture podcasts, Two Birds Both Stoned. This is a small podcast, but they deserve such a bigger audience. This podcast has two hosts, their friends, Kaylin and Emily, and they just talk a lot about pop culture, and they have themed episodes such as The Birds Talk 2015, where they'll go through all the music of 2015, all the pop culture references of 2015, and just discuss the whole year, or 2016. They have an episode called The Birds Talk Taylor Swift Songs as Crimes, where they'll make their own list of Taylor Swift songs that they would want playing while doing these certain crimes. I think why I like them so much is because they're clearly internet kids. They know about Troy Sivan, Tyler Oakley, Connor Franta, and that whole triangle. And they know about old YouTube. They know about British YouTubers. And if you did not know, I'm a I'm an internet kid. I grew up with YouTube. I know everything they talk about. And I don't know, I just find them really funny and relatable and I love their dynamic. They're the type of people where when they're both laughing, you can't help but join in and laughing with them. That is all for my winter favorites. I hope you guys liked this video. If you guys did, let me know in the comments and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and let me know any of your winter favorites. I also have tote bags that I designed myself on my website if you would like to support me. I'm gonna go now. Happy winter. Are we singing the outro song right now? 
Yeah? Okay. Was it something I said? Oh, fuck.